Norway is one of the richest countries on the planet, playing in the same league as Ireland and Switzerland. But not only that, they're also one of the most egalitarian. This means that the difference between the rich and the poor is very subtle. Their welfare state is big, their taxes are high, and their lifestyle is good. But I'm betting you already probably know this. What you probably don't know is that Norway's influence on the international economy is way bigger than it looks. Yes, Norway is behind the scenes of one of the biggest corporations on the planet. But seriously, don't leave this video right now. I know what you're thinking, and no, 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 this video is most definitely not a crossover with Alex Jones. You see, Norway has a population of less than 5 million inhabitants. New York City has more people. Nonetheless, these 5 million people have big shares in the world's major corporations. Yep, you heard that right. The government of Norway has its own hedge fund, and they are among the main shareholders in a lot of companies like Apple, Facebook, and Tesla. Norway might not have a big military, but they have an army of money ready to influence the world's economy. So the question now is, well, why is Norway so rich and powerful? And how did it get here? Now at this point, you're probably all thinking the same thing, and that is probably oil, and you, you are actually kind of right. Norway is one of the world's largest oil producers, but they actually have nothing to do with the other oil-rich countries. I mean, just look at this picture. Here you can see the skylines of Riyadh, Saudi Arabia's capital. It looks like a sci-fi city of the future, right? Skyscrapers, modern buildings, and plenty of lights. Now I'll take a look at this picture of Oslo, the capital of Norway. You can probably see the difference, right? Now, if you've been following visual politic for a long time, you already know that having oil is not the same as being rich. In fact, as you can see on this chart, Norwegian crude oil is twice as expensive to extract as Saudi oil. For a better understanding, most of the Norwegian oil comes from the North Sea. And these oil beds are shared with other countries like the United Kingdom. However, Norway has taken the most advantage of that oil wealth. Okay, okay, and I know what you're probably thinking right now. Ah, this is another visual politic video where Simon tells us how wonderful it is and how rich Norway got by privatizing companies. Right? Right? Well, actually, this time the story is different. Norway is actually a great example of state capitalism. So now you might be wondering, well, what exactly is state capitalism? Why is Norway so rich and powerful? You still haven't answered the question, Simon. And what does it mean for a government to invest in the stock market? Well, do not worry, because today we're going to answer these questions. But as always, before we do that, let's have a look back at the history. <laughs> The Dutch disease. Alright, so I do need to be honest here because Norway has never exactly been a poor country, but it wasn't exactly always a wealthy one either. In the 1950s, Norwegians enjoyed a lifestyle similar to that of the French. This means wealthier than the Spaniards, but poorer than their Swedish neighbors, and of course the Americans. Back then, nobody expected Norway to have oil, but well, things changed dramatically in 1959. At that moment, Shell started prospecting in the North Sea. Shell's an oil company in the Netherlands, and they were looking for potential oil beds in the shores of their country. One day, boom, they found some little gas sources, and whenever there is gas, there is oil. So they kept up their exploration, and this is how one of the biggest oil fields in the world was discovered. An oil field situated under British and Norwegian waters. During the 1960s, Shell got drilling licenses in those two countries. Years later, in 1972, the Norwegian government founded its own oil company, Statoil. First you marry, then you start oil. And this... This is how the North Sea oil boom started. During the 1970s, money flew into this country. In just three years, Norwegians doubled their GDP per capita. All of a sudden, the Norwegian dream meant working in the dinosaur juice industry. I mean, who really wants to go fishing for salmon when you can make a lot of money working with oil? And right now, it all might be sounding pretty fantastic to you, right? Well... Actually, it's not. In fact, this phenomenon, it has a name. They call it the Dutch disease, or the curse of natural resources.
Basically, any time a country finds oil, its economy goes nuts. The government can waste piles of money while still lowering taxes. Citizens, they want to work in the oil industry because it's the most profitable. And, well, what happens next? Well, in a few years, your economy makes just one thing, dinosaur juice. And when you depend so much on a single product, a small change in the market price puts the whole country on the verge of bankruptcy. This is exactly what's happened in Venezuela and what could soon happen in other countries like Saudi Arabia or Bahrain. And this, this was the big difference between Norway and the United Kingdom. Both countries had labor governments, but their policies couldn't be more different. In the year 1976, the UK was in the middle of one of their worst financial crises. The government couldn't wait to squeeze that oil wealth for all it was worth. Norway, however, they had a more stable situation and they could wait. So, well, what does this mean? Well, first, the government put very strict industry regulations in place. Plus, 50% of those oil rigs had to be in the hands of the state-owned oil company. On the other hand, foreign companies had to pay a 78% tax on the oil profits. And that's not all. Norway put a limit on oil production. Just look at this chart. Here you can see where the UK kick-started their production. At the end of the 1970s, the British were already producing more than a million and a half barrels a day, while Norway was still doing a third of that. During the 80s, during the Margaret Thatcher administration, the UK kept pumping oil like there was no tomorrow, while Norway was still pretty much relaxed about the production. So what did they achieve by doing this? Norway was keeping the productive economy focused on oil, but just wait a minute because there's another big difference. You see, during the 80s, Thatcher privatized British petroleum. Norway's government, by contrast, kept control of Statoil. Even today, despite the company changing its name from Statoil to Equinor, the state still owns 67% of the firm. Okay, so now you might be thinking, well, oh my god, so wait, Norway's a socialist country? But just hold on a second, because the Norwegian economic system is actually kind of similar to that of China. And this is what experts are calling state capitalism. This means that the state controls a good share of the economy, but it behaves like a big private company. And so, so what does that mean? Well, check this out. The hedge fund country. Now, before we continue, I should make an aside here because this beautiful, romantic, and sweet melody you're hearing right now is the music of Enderford, a black metal band that's from. No, they're not from Norway. They're actually from Colombia, but it sounds just like a Norwegian band, and they sent us their music for this video. If you want to hear more of them, we have a link to their channel in the description below. All right, back to our story. So do you remember the two pictures I showed you at the beginning of this video? Well, other countries like Saudi Arabia, they used their impressive oil wealth to live like a hip hop artist on a Friday night. However, the different Norwegian administrations, both Labour and Conservative, have measured every last penny they've spent. And so what does this mean? Well, their oil wealth, it went into a piggy bank. And this is how we go to the year 1990. In this year, Norwegian parliament, they realize three things. One, they have a lot of savings. Two, oil market prices go up and down and they cannot control that. And three, the best thing they can do is diversify their economy. And well, how could they do that? Well, how about investing in the stock market? And so, as we say here at Visual Politics, so it was said and so it was done. This is how the Government Pension Fund of Norway, also known as the Oil Fund, was created. This is a hedge fund controlled by the Norwegian Central Bank. And so now you might be thinking, well, oh yeah, but what's so impressive about that? I mean, there are other countries with sovereign wealth funds. There's China, there's Australia, there's the United Arab Emirates, and... Yes, that is true. But look, this is one of the biggest of them all. We're talking about more than a trillion American dollars. This means that if we divide up this fund by the entire Norwegian population, each citizen has more than $200,000 invested in stocks. But this is not the end of the story. According to the law, nobody can touch that money for any public spending. This means that the government can only use the benefits of the fund, but never the capital. And believe me, we are not talking about a small amount of money here. 
how Norway's sovereign wealth fund made $130 billion in one year. Also, according to the law, they cannot invest in their local economy, only in foreign companies. This is why today Norway holds 1.5% of all of the stocks existing in the entire world. Now, of course, some years are better than others, and according to many analysts, the management of the fund is overly conservative and doesn't make as much money as it could. But the truth is, Norway doesn't just use this for diversification. The oil fund is also a political weapon. Norway's $905 billion oil fund flexes its shareholder muscles. World's largest sovereign wealth fund opposed 6,700 company resolutions last year. For example, every year, the Norwegian Central Bank pushes a blacklist with companies that they don't invest in for ethical reasons. This includes weapons manufacturers, tobacco producers, and firms involved in corruption scandals. But this is just the beginning. You see, having stocks of a publicly traded company gives you the right to participate in the shareholders' meetings. You can vote on corporate decisions and even suggest topics for discussion. The more stocks you have, the more important you are in those meetings. Here's an example. This past summer, 2018, Facebook started a new algorithm to filter fake news. They also started to take the wage gap seriously. These two decisions are the outcome of a shareholder meeting. And guess who added those topics in the meeting schedule? Well, yeah, it was Norway. And the same also happens with other companies. Norway's fund backs activists' bid at Alphabet meeting. As you know, Alphabet is the conglomerate that owns Google and YouTube. A small group of shareholders wanted Google to refine the fake news filter, and having the support of Norway's fund helps them win very crucial votes. The same thing happens with Apple. In this case, Norway is the eighth biggest shareholder, with more than nine billion US dollars invested. And they aren't exactly silent in the shareholder meetings. In general, Norway is pushing some of the world's biggest companies to change their corporate policies on many different fronts. Of course, there's the gender gap, but that's not the only one. Part of the Norwegian ideology focuses on this too. Norway's sovereign fund to focus on high executive pay. In many ways, big multinational executives make big salaries despite the company losing money. We saw this several times during the financial crisis. As you can imagine, shareholders of these companies are not exactly happy with this. But it's hard to speak out when you only hold a small number of shares in the company. And this is where Norway comes in, as it's a loudspeaker for smaller investors. Many countries try to control the world with their militaries. Other countries try to sway foreign governments with diplomacy. Norway expands their power through influence on the biggest global companies. And this is the Norwegian conspiracy. But meanwhile, Norwegian citizens can sleep at night knowing that even if oil prices go down, they have their futures guaranteed. And now it's your 